Sexual harassment is a really everyday experience for so many women and girls. Whistling, staring. I could be in jeans and boots like today and it's, oi, sexy. I get catcalled in a racialized sexual way. So people will say things like, hola senorita. Being called like a black whore. Uh, because you wouldn't give your number away to some guy in a club like who's harassing you the entire time, whose only approach to you, by the way, was to grab your body, bits of my body, without consent. Because it might not be like physically violent, but it has like far-reaching effects on you know the people that it happens to. So because of gender inequality in society, I think that sexual harassment is one manifestation of that and that men and boys feel that they have a certain level of entitlement and ownership over women and girls' bodies. I felt like the person who is, like the perpetrator, should I say, is, it seems like they feel like it's normal. You must respond to them because they've spoken to you and you must speak when you're spoken to. It's kind of this, this expectation that's not written anywhere um, but kind of governs our social norms. Very rarely do people step in actually. I suppose they feel it's not their place and it makes you feel humiliated um, and onlookers just think that you're in the wrong. Saying to my friend, like, I'm actually so angry right now because this is now my automated response is to actually smile and pretend like, oh, it's fine, when really, actually, that's really affected me. It's a common mis misconception that those minor incidents are minor. They're not in the minds of those who experience them. They're not. It's, it's really important to talk about race when we talk about sexual harassment. My experiences are different as a black woman than they are uh, for my white friends. I should be up for it or that I am fair game or that I shouldn't care if my body's touched in a specific way. After me ignoring them, that's when it turns racial. So that's when it might be, you black this or you black that, how dare you ignore me? The next thing you know, he starts making monkey, monkey noises at me. And I'm just like, okay, so you go from objectifying me, from me being like the sexual thing to you, and then when you get rejected, you think it's okay for you to then, you know, um, shout, you know, racist taunts. Um, it makes me feel really vulnerable. Almost suffocated. I mean, I'm sure it has an effect on my mental health, um, the fact that I have to think about it every day, as soon as I leave the house, this is gonna to happen to me, I need to be prepared. We don't have freedom of movement because it's always there. It means that from quite an early age, you start to um, control your own behavior. I walk out onto the street and I don't smile. I never make eye contact with um, men when I'm walking anywhere. Or I will wear something and be like, oh, I can't really wear this because this is going to lead to... And these are things that I want to wear. These are... I want to smile. I want to, like, walk down the street and look like a friendly person. And it has changed the way that I am. I am quite guarded. I am quite suspicious. My, there was, for example, my phone died one time and I wasn't listening to any music, but I was just pretending to listen to music just so people could leave me alone almost. I'd love to give some decent advice because I know it happens all the time, but I don't really have any. <laughs> and I don't have any because it's not discussed. I think it's not taken seriously enough. Why do we have to carry the burden or like do all the emotional labour for them to actually realise that what they're doing is okay? I think men need to talk to each other and say, actually, do, don't do that, that's really messed up. And I think what can be done about it is making sure that our transport systems are safe for young women. I'd just like to move around like a bird. Be free, wear whatever I want to wear, say whatever I want to say and do whatever I want to do.